Hey, it's Jordan with Status Coup. Uh, more horrifying information coming out about uh, the Israeli torture camp and the right-wing extreme nut jobs who raided it and broke in yesterday in Israel to try and stop the arrests of IDF reservists alleged to have sodomized a detainee. Yes, sodomized a detainee. And honestly, this seems to me to be eerily similar to Abu Ghraib, to Guantanamo Bay, and the horrors that the U.S. has inflicted on many, many innocent people. Uh, let's give you details. This is from uh, an Israeli uh, outlet, Ynet, uh, that they seem to be able to report accurately uh, what went on, which was sexual assault, rape. Apparently, the New York Times, Washington Post, and the rest of them cannot report that. I wonder why. Medical reports bolster suspicion on sexual assault of Nukba terrorist. And uh, this is uh, Nukba uh, terrorist. They are claiming that the uh, person was part of Hamas's military wing. I do not know that. Uh, there are many people held in Israeli prison camps that are innocent. Uh, so, you know, I can't confirm that they are a Hamas soldier or not. Uh, but Reserve soldiers deny accusations after nine detained for questioning. Judicial officials say without internal probe, international tribunals will go after political military leaders. Military police investigators have some evidence supporting suspicions that reservists deployed at the Sade Taman installation holding Nukba terrorists captured in Gaza sodomized a prisoner. Among other evidence, the investigators have medical records showing the terrorist was hospitalized with serious injury to his anus. According to the medical findings, he bled from his anus after an object was inserted into it. He was returned to the detention center and continued to receive medical attention there. The nine soldiers detained for questioning on suspicion of sodomy and rape are awaiting remand. This is in the democracy in the Middle East. I'll say alleged, but seems that there's evidence that this detainee was sodomized and raped in the anus by IDF soldiers. Well, apparently the batshit right-wing lunatics in Israel's uh, parliament don't seem to care and are not outraged by the accusations of rape by the IDF, but are outraged that they are being held accountable. This was a scene uh, yesterday uh, in Israel in the uh, Knesset. I uh, am going to play it. Uh, it's in Israel, but you'll be able to read the captions. Uh, and you will see that there is a right-wing uh, member of the uh, Israeli government who refuses to vote, wants to go on a voting strike. Uh, because uh, the uh, Israeli uh, authorities stormed in to arrest these suspected rapists. He's not outraged by the IDF anally raping a detainee. He's outraged that those IDF reservists would dare be held accountable. I mean, you really can't make this stuff up. Uh, let's play this clip. <laughs> שאפשר לבוא ולעצור חיילים על דברים שעושים למחבלי נוחבה, לא נגמר. אוקיי? ואני מאוד מבקש, ואני חושב שחבריי בקואליציה טוב יעשו, אם יעשו כמוני. אנחנו לא יכולים להמשיך כרגיל. להכניס מקל לרקטום של בן אדם, זה לגיטימי? כן, אם הוא נוחבה, הכל לגיטימי לעשות לו. הכל. או מצוין. הכל. זה מה ש... הכל האנשים האלה, אתה יודע מה עשו? In case you missed that, I don't know who asked it, but a uh, minister asked, is it legitimate to insert a stick in the suspected, uh, the suspected terrorist or the detainee's rectum? Is that legitimate? And the Likud member, who is the uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister's party, the Likud uh, minister, Hanok uh, Milwitzki, yes, if he is Nakba, everything is legitimate to do to him. Uh, paging Dick Cheney, paging George W. Bush, paging Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, 
uh, the torturers that we unleashed at Abu Ghraib, at Guantanamo Bay, that, by the way, we still do. This is happening in the so-called democracy in the Middle East. And by the way, it wasn't just uh, the right-wing lunatics breaking into this Israeli prison camp yesterday. Then you had more right-wing lunatics and mobs uh, trying to invade uh, the Israeli military court. This, ha this scene was last night. Let's play this. I'll tell you, we are not just funding the weapons in Israel. A lot of U.S. money that goes to Israel helps fund these prison camps, these torture camps, and all of Israel's apparatus, where apparently there is mass torture going on sexually, psychologically, et cetera, et cetera. Not a peep, by the way, not a peep so far out of Kamala Harris, of course, Donald Trump, not a peep in response to this. There's also uh, serious, serious threats and violence happening to Israeli journalists by these right-wing lunatics. I'm going to read this to you. Uh, it's really, really jarring uh, that this is a so-called democracy. And again, this is not all of Israel. There are people in Israel aghast at this. This is from a reporter, Hadas uh, Grinberg. She's with Channel 11 in Israel. Uh, she's describing uh, her experience yesterday at this prison camp that right-wing lunatics invaded and broke into to try and stop the arrest of these suspected rapists. I was a bit busy yesterday covering the anarchy in Beit Liad, but it is recommended that someone wake up here before journalists are murdered. Yes, I meant to kill him. We really are not very far from there. Kicking, pushing, spitting, chasing with clinging to the body, a triple finger jab in the face, throwing water, tampering with equipment, stealing a microphone, all this along with swearing, fucking with Arabs, terrorists will fuck you, slut, Al Jazeera, fly ye whores, leftists are traitors, only 14, referring to uh, another Israeli channel. This is what the attack looked and sounded like that Talia, Talia, the photographer, and I went through yesterday in a nearby house. Talia, in the middle of the attack, while I'm trying to collect some of the equipment so that we could get away from the crowd, she yelled excitedly to the police officer next to her, come help. He looked at her and turned his head back to his cell phone. A second before it escalated even more, his head came, uh, uh, a second before it escalated even more, other policemen picked up and, quote, opened a secure access for us to keep us away from the attackers. Later, one of the policemen explained to me that with all the goodwill, their job is to not is not to guard journalists at the demonstration. Later in the evening, while I was documented the break into the base on my cell phone, a protester from the burglars came towards me and politely warned in his ear, quote, you better stop taking pictures now, because if not, I'll tell everyone that you're from here at 11, Channel 11, and then I'm not responsible for how it ends. I have already experienced attacks by extreme right-wing activists guarding walls in load in the territories in demonstrations. In short, this is not new. We as a society are already in the abyss. Now we'll just see when and how, and especially whether we'll get out of it. Because even if we leave, it seems that it won't be in peace. That from an Israeli journalist on the physical threats and verbal threats and harassment she received from these lunatics who have been mainstreamed in Israel. And we are funding. To be clear, we are funding this. You would think, I don't know, if there's medical evidence that a detainee had anal fissures or anal um, marks, you would think that would be reported in America, right? I mean, according to it, it, Israeli media, uh, there was evidence, medical records showing the terrorists, they're calling terrorists, was hospitalized with a serious injury to the anus. According to medical findings, he bled from the anus. Well, 
Apparently, uh, the New York Times and others uh, couldn't quite gather that reporting. Uh, let me show you this. This is from Asal Rod. Uh, New York Times ran questionable stories of sexual abuse on October 7th, which Israel uses as a justification for its brutal war on Gaza. But when it comes to sexual abuse of Israeli soldiers against Palestinians, they're too shy to say rape. Headline, Israeli soldiers are detained for questioning and the suspected abuse of a Palestinian prisoner. Asal then shows more headlines from other outlets. The Guardian, Israeli inquest into alleged abuse of Palestinian detainees sparks far-right fury. Arrest of IDF reservists suspected of abuse prompts confrontation. No mention anything having to do with sexual assault. Then you have Reuters. Israeli military probe suspected abuse of Palestinian detainee draws protest. Hmm. Then you have the BBC. Israeli protesters enter army, enter army base after soldiers held over Gaza detainee abuse. Huh. And then we look at the actual New York Times story. Israeli troops held for questioning and prisoner abuse investigation. At least, not, at least nine reservists were detained at a military base holding thousands of Gazans, prompting ultranationalists to break into the base. I mean, the first mention of sexual abuse is in the second paragraph, and it only says it does not give details of the abuse allegations, but a lawyer representing three of the soldiers said they were being questioned on suspicion of severe sexual abuse of Palestinian prisoners. Wait a minute. How does a outlet in Israel, Ynet, far less resources than the New York Times, get medical information? How does Ynet get evidence that investigators had of medical records showing the terrorist was hospitalized with ser serious injury to his anus, including bleeding from the anus? But the New York Times can't get that. The New York Times, who has reporters and a bureau, in Israel, same thing with the Washington Post. Far right in uproar over Israel detains reservists over Gaza detainee abuse. Far right demonstrators broke into Israel's today Tayman base to protect protest the detention of guards. But first thing I found about sexual abuse was far down in the story. I mean, maybe the middle of the story. The abuse of Palestinian prisoners has accelerated sharply across the penal system since Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th, according to rights groups, lawyers, and former detainees who say that torture, sexual abuse, and deprivation of food have been commonplace. They're not even talking about this specific incident. Here, they finally mention it further down in the story, much further down in the story. Naji Abbas, director of the Prisoners and Detainees Department for Physicians for Human Rights Israel, said his organization had interviewed former Sadei Tamin detainees who reported cases of others being raped. So the Washington Post isn't even reporting that this specific detainee uh, that the reservists were arrested was allegedly sodomized. How is that possible? How is that possible? And I want to read this because I think it's instructive. Uh, I'm not, you know, shaming this person, but this is a popular podcaster uh, who I believe uh, does a podcast on the history of Israel, uh, Shayal Ben Afrayam. He tweeted, I feel stupid and ashamed. In May, an expose came out on CNN detailing the abuses in Sadeh Taimen. Then the New York Times released their own article on it. Both were backed up with Israeli sources crossed with Palestinian ones. I dismissed them because my government sources and Israeli media denied them. My whole life, I was told that the international media was out to get Israel, that they were all anti-Semites. But today, how I realize how much I was lied to by my country, by my friends, by my media. Today, many of the people I talked to who denied these allegations admitted they were true. And the worst part? None of this is coming to light because the IDF and government have changed their hearts about it. It's coming out because the pressure from the UK, the ICC, and the ICJ was getting too great to ignore. This would get Netanyahu, Gallant, and the chief of staff in serious trouble. So they finally said the truth, that Israel is routinely torturing inmates, that sexual abuse is fairly common there, that people have been tortured to death. Worst of all, many of the people in this facility were innocent, rounded up by accident. 
but there was no real verification process before they were subjected to this hell on earth. This cannot go on. Sounds like many journalists I've spoken to in America who realized they were lied by their trusted sources in the government. This is what we are funding. This is what we are enabling. And I'm not saying this is all of Israel. There are plenty of uh, left-leaning politicians, good people, good citizens, including people I know and family. My wife is Israeli. But this is what we are supporting. We should not be giving a dime to Israel's continued genocide of Palestinians and torture, not just sexual abuse, worse than that. I do not see any words or response from Vice President Harris, Donald Trump, or any of the VP prospects wanting to be Kamala Harris's vice president. And I'm not expecting to.